Hi, this is Jean Jacques Taylor, and you're listening to Jot Talk. This is a podcast where I talk about the Cowboys, the team I've covered as a beat writer, columnist, TV insider, and radio host for 28 years. I'll also talk about the NFL and the things I love working out, streaming, food, and all things down. Welcome to Jock Talk, where sports is fluid. What's true today might not be true an hour, a day, or a month from now. I'm going to give you the truth straight, no chaser. Glad to have you aboard. Let's get it. Welcome to episode 110, my friends. I'm John Shock Taylor, joined by my boy, one of my oldest friends, one of my good friends, Big Joy the Big Rig. How you doing this morning, my friend? It's all good. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Uh, what's the sit rep, dog? See, we are 55 seconds in, and uh, we are five by five. Operation Shock Talk is a go. Well, that's how you know Big Joe is a true professional. Uh, this is show number 110, which means number 10. I can't come up with no good number 10s. Who you got? Reggie Collier. You know what? Let me give you a virtual high five for that. Reggie Collier. That's a, that's a quality number 10. Former USFL quarterback. Black quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys before black quarterbacks became fashionable. Uh, did he ever play for the Cowboys? I don't think so, because they, <laughs> they was trying to decide between him and Kevin Sweeney, I think. And then, so we know who we know how that situation turned yeah, out. They took crazy. Kevin Sweeney, who led but, the strike team. But number ten is the backup now. Uh, Cooper Rush. Yep. We this how much Cooper his props. You know what? I this is this is shameful because I thought I was like I think Cooper Rush is number ten, but I was too sorry to look it up and see. And uh, we'd like to do this spur the moment off the top of our head, and I felt that was cheating. Uh, this is gonna be an interesting show today. Each and every uh, Friday is brought to you by Smoky John's Barbecue, that food that is to die for, the Jam Session Bowl. You know, that is, y'all need to go get the Jam Session Bowl. Uh, my, my stepmom is in town. I may take her to go get the Jam Session Bowl uh, before she gets out of town for my granddaughter's graduation this weekend. Uh, jam Session Bowl at Smoky John's, 1820 West Mockingbird, the Jam Session Bowl, is only on the secret menu, baby. That means if you don't know about it by listening to the show, then you don't know it exists. So get the Jam Session Bowl. It's a bowl with a mac and cheese base or a mashed potato base. Then your choice, two out of five smoked meats. I usually roll with the uh, brisket and the sausage. And then all that good stuff that you find on a loaded baked potato. And you know what I'm talking about. Bacon bits and chives and sour cream and butter all that good stuff. Uh, cheese. They put that on it. Then they drizzle it with sauce or they drench it with sauce, whatever you prefer or prefer. And then, uh, <laughs> then it is to live for. It is food that is scrumptious, delicious. It's enough for two, easy. And uh, if you got a little shorty that's six or seven, I'm telling you, really, the three of y'all can get off the same thing. No, no problem. Um, jam session bowl. I've never heard anybody who actually had the Jab Session Bowl say anything other than it was tremendous. Uh, so, don't take my word for it. Go to Smoky John's Barbecue, get the Jab Session Bowl for yourself. It is food to live for. And then, if you got to have Smoky John's in your life more immediately than that, go over to the website, smokyjohns.com, click on the marketplace, order the sauce, order the rub, or order the combo. The sauce and the rub, get them shipped to your house in a couple days. No problem. And then finally, if you got to have the jam session, I mean, if you got to have Smokey John's today, hey, make your way over to HEB. They got them all over the place now. You know, uh, where they got them, dog? Frisco, Burleson, uh, McKinney, Allen, Wasahatchee. If you look for HEB, they ain't hard to find. They got Smokey John's on the shelves at HEB. Smokey John's Barbecue, 1820 West Mockingbird, home of the jam session bowl. It is food to live for, baby. It is love in your mouth. Mm, mm, mm. Let's talk about something. This is going to be a different show today. Uh, Because we love y'all, we've been doing some late night shows. Uh, We decided to do today, we're going to do a regular show today. If the Mavericks win, then y'all will get some bonus time. If the Mavericks lose, well, y'all just going to have to hear about it on Sunday, on Monday. Because me and Joe are going to bed. Not together, but we're going to bed. Oh, that's a pause like (laughs) You should have seen the look oh, on Content God. Day's nah, face. Nah, Content Day was hey. like, oh, snap. What is? What did he just say? Hey, pump your brakes, dog. <laughs> Shit, <I'm, laughs> hey, pump your brakes, all right? 
<laughs> For all that. Yeah, dog. No. I ain't even, no. I mean. You, you need to calm down. That's what you need to do. Oh, I'm just happy to talk to y'all this morning. Yeah. Uh, and so we're going to talk about some stuff we want to talk about today because we the show's been a little disjointed because of the playoff runs. I will say uh, the Stars got their butt smacked last night. Uh, it's 2-2 in the Western Conference Finals with Edmonton. Man, I um, I just uh, – I let me – okay, let me stop. Let me start over. As a sports fan, not a reporter, but as a sports fan, it would be so freaking cool if you could have the Mavericks in the NBA Finals and the Stars in the Stanley Cup. I'm just talking about strictly from a – I'm a sports fan. I love sports. And to have your city overtaken with a chance to win a couple championships, regardless if you win them, just the excitement that would be in the city right then, to me, would be awesome. It'd be fantastic. <clears throat> so I am rooting for that outcome. Uh, so that being said, uh, you know, Stars, uh, they got to pick it up because Edmonton's giving them all they can handle. Uh, the marriage, I think, will still get their series taken care of. But we're going to talk about something uh, I know Joe that excites Joe, uh, excites me, and that I've been looking forward to for a decade. Have you been reading the reports on what's in the new EA college football game? Yeah, I read it. I read um, it. I've, I've looked at a couple of videos. Yeah. The most important thing that I've read thus far, and it doesn't really matter to me at one level because I told you, I, I, for whatever reason, it's kind of weird to me. I fell out of love with Madden 10 years ago, 12 years ago. So I haven't played Madden in a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so any, you know, I know there was a lot of concern out there that, oh, well, I hope college football is not just a Madden copycat, blah, blah, blah. And everything I read says it is, is a, you know, two distinctly different games. But uh, what have you read about EA College Football what comes out in the first part of July, I think, that excites you? <laughs> Oh, just the fact that it's coming out is exciting. You know, I've been playing the 14 version for maybe the last two or three years. I I pulled it back out, but I'm I'm excited that it's coming out all together. Um, I don't know. I don't know. What what do you, I mean, what are you asking? I'm I'm not understand. I'm like, I mean, I mean, I've been reading a lot of stuff about the gameplay. I've been reading a lot of stuff about what's involved in the game. The the, um, the gameplay stuff you kind of got to see how it all works out. It's a lot of stuff they doing. You know, there's a lot of stuff they keeping. It's a lot of stuff that they doing. You got to kind of see how it all messes together because some of it ain't no good, you know. Like, right. uh, you know, uh, they won't let you edit the players anymore. So that's that's a bummer. You know? What you mean? You can't edit the ratings or the players. That's what I, that's what I saw. Really? Yep. You can't transport. The, your draft class to Madden, which is not important to me. Somebody asked me because I bought the uh, MVP version or whatever, the one that, not the one that includes Madden twenty five. Right, I'll get Madden cheap because when college football come out, I won't be playing Madden till December. <laughs> you know, it's like whatever. So it, it, it's 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 an afterthought. But uh, yeah, you can't port the draft class, which who cares? Uh, you only get thirty years in the franchise. A lot of people was upset about that because they was doing sixty. But the only reason people did sixty because a new game didn't come out. You know what I'm saying? Good. That's 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 the gist of that. You know, it's a lot of things they worked on. They revamped uh, re- 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 they revamped recruiting. What have you heard about that? In uh, terms used of what? to used to be a number <laughs> system in thirteen. Right. I don't know exactly what they did, but they they got hours of. Um, like hours of recruiting, uh, talk to them. They just made a combo of stuff. I don't know. Might be a little hard. They are taking um, NIL is not going to be in there. I think. I know you were a big proponent of it not being in. Yeah, there. I don't want that. Now, transferring and stuff will probably be that, but I don't. They're gonna. They say they're gonna fix that, but it, it, it ought to be pretty good. It ought to be pretty good. I think. No, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, uh, some people, I think what happened is uh, they invited some people to come and test it out and play it mm-hmm. uh, recently, like a summit. Yeah, they didn't invite those... us. <clears throat> no, I was a little disappointed by that. Yeah. You need to get on uh, that, that, get on that, that, that get that, on that list. That Jacques Taylor, that, yeah. Hey, hey, you know who you are is, is important. 
I need you to I need you to flex that muscle, get us on that damn <laughs> list next time. <laughs> Yeah, that's not that's not a bad thing. That needs to be one of the things I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, well, if you just, you know what, if you'd have pursued that, we'd have got that. But you got too much stuff going on. I, I'm serious. I'm not bullshitting right now. If you'd have wanted to do that, we'd have got that. We didn't even think nah. about that. No, we didn't. Uh, so nah, maybe we'll put that on the list. Hell yeah, we uh, should too. Uh, so what I'm reading is that the gameplay is incredibly smooth. I find it interesting. This one dude said he was playing, and uh, he's playing on the road. And he ended up with a sack and a penalty because of the crowd noise or whatever the effect that the crowd noise had on uh, on his team. Um, you know, back in the day, you used to get the squiggly lines. You couldn't see your pass routes and stuff Yeah. Uh, when the crowd noise. So it'll be <clears throat> interesting to see what happens with that. Uh, apparently, they say that the blocking on the AI is really well done. Um, I'll be interested to see, you know, how, how the RPO option works. Yeah, it works on Madden. It's, it's a cheat code on Madden. Oh, well, I, yeah, you know, I ain't kinda like cheesy. cheat codes. It's kind of cheesy on Madden a little bit. Um, uh, nah, you know what, man? You can't. My thing is, I'm excited, but you just don't know what kind of game you get until it's in your hand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Until you can tweak it or whatever you want to do with it. You just don't well, know. See, that, uh, that leads to a good question. What's the most important thing for you when it comes to a game? Like for some people is is internet play, for some people is this, for some people is that. Nah, I I, I play internet play, but but uh, the dynasty is the coolest thing to me. How many seasons can I get without the less? With I mean, how much? How many seasons can I get in a row, in in as less time as possible? Right. You know, so I'll probably be a coordinator, just play the offensive side. Yeah, you and, turn uh, me on in that room. Yeah, me. twenty twenty minutes a game, and you know. Three games an hour, and you ain't that, you ain't there all day. You know, you can, you can do three games and then get up and go do something else. Right, right. Most important thing is realism, the atmosphere. Um, I don't know, just building the team. I've always liked building the team. You know, so uh, for, for me, I'll, it's a lot of those same things. But I, I love, and that's why I was, I, I had the reaction that I had. I like to be able to tweak the game to, to, to exactly how I like it. Yep. Um, you know, whether that's settings in terms of whatever the settings are. Yep. Uh, but, you know, I'd like to tweak it in as many different ways as possible so that it's customized for me. Yep. And so that I like it the way that the gameplay is played. Like Joe and I used to go through and create, you know, at certain points you get pretty good and you're blowing everybody out. So we used to go create. Uh, you know, players for the for the incoming freshman class and wherever they end up is wherever they end up, uh, you know, because it gives you some more talented players to play against because when a computer make a player, usually they don't make them so good. Yeah, and so, you know, you can make your version of Dick Buckus or Reggie White or Mike Singletary or O.J. Simpson and, uh, you know, see, if, see, see how you can contain them. So um, that'll be interesting. Uh, I heard this <clears throat> and I read this. College Football 25 has 134 different playbooks, part of 10 different offensive systems. Yeah. And they yeah. they say that the playbooks are really distinct. Like, you know, Ohio State playbook is much, even if you run a similar offense, is much different than, you know, pick a team, whoever runs that style of offense. It's got that uh, Wake Forest offense. Wake Forest, no, so, Wake Forest I, I with, mean, that, with that 10-second mesh. Between the quarterback okay, well, and the damn running back, where it's like one thousand one, one thousand two, and they pull it, they got, they got that. I heard they got that. That that'll be crazy, man. That's probably gonna be glitchy as hell. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. Uh, they said they also spent some time on Air Force with the triple option. We've always run the option. Um, so, but anyway, I think it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be fun. It's, good. it's a lot of hype. It's a lot of uh, conversation about it. And, we'll see. Uh, we will see. You know, I'm looking forward to uh, to having it come out and uh, and getting my hands on it. If you and, can't uh, edit, though, man, that's the best thing about that is the editable content. You know, no, that I you would agree edit, with that. You know that you although, can edit things the way you want them. You know, I, although I will say this about players, um, I I love to be able to edit players, but my game of choice right now is FIFA. And once you start a season or a dynasty or whatever you're playing, 
you can't go back in and edit the skills on those players. Right. But FIFA for, you know, for all the whatever, there's enough dudes in there that come out who have tremendous skill sets that I haven't felt like, oh, I need to edit this kind of guy because there's no player, you know, who has this dynamic skill set. They got a lot of dudes who come through with dynamic skill sets. So maybe uh, college football will be like that. Maybe because you can't edit them, they will make more. Let me see. They will have more players who have, you know, tremendous skill sets like Reggie Bush or Vince Young or, you know, whomever. Well, see, yeah, you don't edit your own players. You try to edit the other team so they, yeah. so it's better. You just, just like you said, just tweaking, just tweaking the game to to your settings. You know, some people like to have six thousand yard rushes in one season on one team. Well, you know that was uh, that's your boy Matt McLean. Yeah, Matt yeah. says I play to have fun. Yeah. I want to score a touchdown on ninety five yards every, all the time. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, really? He goes, yeah, that's fun for me. Yeah. <laughs> He says, he says, I like my quarterback to throw for 14,000 yards in the season. That's fun. And I go, really? He goes, yeah. I said, all right, dog. However you get down, just however you get down, man. Yeah, I ain't knocking him. I don't like that. I don't do that. But that's another, That's the best thing about the NCAA is you breaking team records. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially especially if you give them interception records, you have done some work. How about that? Yep. <laughs> yeah, you have done some real work. All right, but that's college football. It's coming out in July. Uh, I think it's starting to ratchet up. That that's only a couple months away, man. And uh, it's uh, it's gonna be a lot of late nights for some folks. I'm gonna have to have some discipline, and uh, you know, limit my my mess around with it uh, because I got stuff to do. <laughs> Although I wish I didn't. It's uh, it's it's going to be fun when it come out, man. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you already got yours. I haven't I haven't bought mine online yet. It, I don't know why. It seems like it doesn't seem like there's any urgency to it. If it's not like you're gonna run, it's not like they're gonna run out of copies if it's online. So yeah, uh, you get it three days early, and then uh, hell, with everybody buying it, it's probably gonna take you three days to download it. Well, you know, nah, that's the one a good thing. point, right? There. Yeah, with everybody buying. You know, I don't know how they serve is gonna be, but we'll see. All right, your Cowboys, your Dallas Cowboys, the ones who play on the football field. They have a mini camp this week. I mean, an OTA, whatever we call them these days. Uh, Michael Parsons decided to show up to this one. I thought that was a uh, that was cool uh, that he decided to show up and uh, participate and uh, get a feel for uh, Mike Zimmer's defense up close and personal. Um, but here's the question, man. <clears throat> and this is not about Dak, con- Dak Prescott's contract. It's not about Dak Prescott's future. But it is about Dak Prescott. Um, I think this is a huge year for Dak Prescott in terms of where he start. Like I think most people think most people think Dak Prescott is a really good quarterback, and I think this is a huge year for him to figure out whether he's able to take a step and really move up a notch, or whether he's just going to be in the class of, you know, he's good, really good, but you can only go so far with him. Uh, and that's because, for better or for worse, they asking him to take a bigger load this year. They asking him to do more things with a little bit less talent, I think. And so there's more onus on him to perform. And uh, I love the fact that Dak doesn't mind betting on himself. I'm just curious to figure out, to see how the bet goes out. And it starts in the off season. Uh, right now, but they haven't really given him any more weapons at receiver. Uh, the running game has been downgraded, in my opinion. Um, they're asking two rookies to play significant roles in the offensive line, and it doesn't really seem like they've put Dak in position to succeed. And so, if he can overcome this and have a big year, I think it says a lot about him. What do you think? Man, that's more subplots than the John Grisham novel. <laughs> I'm just saying, damn, well, I mean, all, all of that, all of that. And and, and, and hey, they want him to take – we talking about the future? I'm not sure he got a future in Dallas with all that stuff going on because you got to you, – you downgrade the running game and you got a coach who tradition, traditionally talks about running that don't run. Right. And then, you know, the, the savior might be 
that 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 he got to look down there at Mike Zimmer if he ain't running the ball. Maybe Zim be looking at him like, "Fool, what you doing?" You know, giving him. I don't him- think so. Oh, yeah. What happened? No, we're good. Okay. <clears throat> uh, it might be time to take your medicine or something. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, now nah, I just think, uh, man, I think that. You gotta get Jack. Jack gotta get some overall overall help. He can't do it all by himself. He's not Tom Brady. He's not Patrick Mahomes. So he going him taking a bigger load is not good for him because he got the team overall got to do better. And we haven't we as, as as the team is constructed right now, we don't know what we got. And that's my question. And this is a this is a uh, philosophical question. Why do you think? Like, I don't think it's any breaking news that Dak is a guy who needs some help to play his best football. He's not a guy who can carry a franchise, in my opinion, based on what we've seen and the times you've asked him to do that have not been his best seasons. So why do you think it is the Cowboys have set it up for it to be like that? Because it don't seem to make no sense to me. They don't – I don't know. It's, it's kind of like Clarence was saying the other day. They don't – they're not trying to win. They just – they just like their image. I mean, I don't. You know what? I'm, you may be right. I'm not sure they trying to really, really win. He talked about being all in, and everybody in the world jumped on that. And then he decided, what the hell? We you, we heard all, I'm all in, and then Jerry make you question, what the hell is all in? If this is all in, what what you doing is all in? We don't really know what all in is, you know. Yeah, I think um, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, he's never been that guy. I don't think that's that's his best asset. And yet you're asking him to do that in a year where, you know, everybody's up. So um, I hate to think like that because I've always bought into the fact that the Cowboys have been trying to win whether they win or not. And now I'm like, maybe maybe other folks are right. Maybe I'm slow to the party. Maybe it really is just lip service. And as long as, you know, fans are filling up the stands and people are buying their merchandise and they're making money in piles – that really, you know, the winning is secondary because they haven't won at the highest level and there seems to be no drop-off in fandom. They still get the TV appearances uh, and they're still the most valuable franchise in sports. You can keep three stars and make people think you got a chance to win. You can keep Dak, you can keep CeeDee Lamb, you can keep Michael Parsons. And that's enough star power right there to make people think you're trying to win. Maybe they, maybe they don't. Maybe the sleight of hand is good enough, and they don't look real close and go. You know what? <laughs> we got some, but we don't got nothing. You know what Fools I'm saying? Go. Yeah. So I don't know. It's uh, it's very interesting to me because when you look at the running game, I mean, it's who is that Rico Dottle who's always hurt? Even though I like uh, like a lot of what he does, but he's always hurt. There's no reason for me to think that he's not going to be hurt. Uh, Zeke Elliott, one of my favorite players, has not been a real difference maker in probably two years. And then, uh, you know, Malcolm Davis from Florida uh, will get some run. He couldn't beat out Rico Dotto last year. I mean, I think he's just a guy. So I don't know where you're going well, to run about, the ball. What about Dukes, man? <clears throat> Stop. We can't talk and, about Dukes, man. That's a fan favorite right there, man. Yeah, he a mascot right now. Until he does something. And yeah. at some point, yeah. you know, you don't have to be a mascot forever. But for right now, I'd say he's a mascot. What's the little dude uh, for Philadelphia, Scott, number 35? I, think. I don't know. Yeah. That's the, that's, that's, he's like a Deuce Vaughn player. He made the team. You know, he barely made the team. And he's been, he been a productive backup. Maybe, yeah, maybe Deuce maybe, can maybe do they, something like maybe that. Maybe they can get that out of the little guy named Scott, yeah. who, uh, you know, uh, whose name we can't even call. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, maybe, maybe they could do something with that. Uh, you know, the receivers, to me, Brandon Cooks is nice. Obviously, C.D. Lamb is terrific. But the NFL is a violent game. It's built around who can survive. You are one wide receiver injury away from disaster. Uh, you know, and they didn't really upgrade the, the third and fourth and fifth receivers to me. They're looking for internal improvement. I don't know, man. It just seems like I don't know what they're I, – I would love to know what their real plan for the offseason was because they really haven't done anything to improve their team other than the draft. And drafting in the 20s with no uh, – you know, I mean, it's just 
it's a very weird off season to me. It's the first time in a long time I haven't seen any semblance of a plan. And it's just like I you know, man, I don't have um I don't have any, and I'm not a dude who sits around and goes, you know, I, I say all the time, not my job to have hope, faith, and optimism about how a team is going to do. But, dude, this just seems like disaster waiting to happen to me. Um, and they're going to have a very poor season, and uh, next year is going to be a clear the books and reset season. And that's just the vibe I'm getting, and I think that they're preparing for that, and they're just like, ah, we'll see what happens this year. The more you say that <laughs> – Oh, I believe it. The more it's what it's looking like. I mean, I just don't. Uh, I'm I'm willing to listen to people tell me I'm wrong, uh, and yeah. I don't. This is not something I'm like. Oh, good, uh, you know. But I just I haven't seen literally anything that they've done to actively get better. Uh, and you know, counting the rookies is fine, but you know that's a crapshoot. And then the rookies that they drafted that they're counting on. They're not like, oh, yeah, he can step in and really do this. Yeah, we know that. Because you don't. <laughs> there's a lot of talk, and it's just talk for right now. Uh, but there's, it's talk from people who know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and so the talk is already like, hey, now, you know, don't be surprised if Tyler Guyton doesn't start, you know, when the season starts. Like, what are you talking about? He spoke to me, surprised. Hey, people are like, hey, don't, don't be surprised, you know, if they can do this. And, you know, I, I'm like, really? I'm like, dog. I mean, they, I don't know. I don't have very many expectations for your Dallas Cowboys this season. It's kind of weird. Um, I, now maybe, think, I think most fans should look at it that way. You might be pleasantly surprised by what they do. If you think if you think they rebuilding the Make a Super Bowl run and it don't look like it. <laughs> so if you lower your expectations, we might be happy this year. All right. All right. I mean, I think that's a uh, that might be the play this year because I just, uh, to me, man, when you look at it, they haven't added anything on defense outside of, uh, you know, a linebacker got cut who used to be a pro bowler uh, who played in Mike Zimmer's system. They didn't really add anything on offense. You know, they added some stuff in the draft. Uh, but then they weren't picking high in the draft where you get impact players. I mean, it's just – I'm I think, telling y'all. I think I've been they covering had. Cowboys since 1995, and this is one of the weirdest off seasons. Uh, hold up one second, though. Like, even in 2000 when they sucked, it was like, hey, we're clearing the books this year. We're going to take a hit. That's a plan. I really don't know what their plan is this year, and that's troubling. So what were you saying? I think I think they I think they added significantly on defense. I think like I've been saying the whole year they got guys that actually play linebacker. It's gonna make a difference on defense. You're not having a 200 pound guy at the goal line. It's just philosophically they've added and, and personnel wise they've added a lot of stuff on defense. And I think they're gonna be better. Well, they what can't they help but personnel wise on defense. O'Shawn coming back, Kendricks. Uh, Evans going to play with uh, two other linebackers instead of lighting the ass. That's that's just in the significance, right? It's a big deal because you get the guys you want. Uh, uh, you get the guys you want in the system you want. Um, Wolf Hunter was not an inside linebacker. He was serviceable, but they played him inside. He had to get physical, and that just wasn't his game toward the end of his career, which was very short. Uh, now you get the guys in the system that you that actually. The coach is actually putting them guys, all right, these are the guys I want. It's not no hybrid BS or none of that other stuff. I say, I think they're going to so you're going to be well-rounded. That's 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 what I'm betting the farm on, that the defense is going to be better. It's gonna be, it might not be as exciting, but it's going to be very good. That's what I think. All right. I ain't convinced, so we'll see. And I like Mike Zimmer as a coach, and I think Mike Zimmer will bring – a uh, mentality, and you know, I think I told y'all before when I talked to Zim about how do you stop the run. First thing out of his mouth is attitude. Second is technique. You know, and so I, I know that he will bring that. And then the third is obviously you got to have players to do it. Personnel. So, there you go. Yeah. And so we'll see. Well, I'm saying. Um, but you know, it's uh, even if you've moved the personnel around, they haven't added. You know, Overshine. You can say they added him because he didn't play last year. 
but he's coming off a knee surgery, knee injury, and we've never seen him play in the NFL. So we're assuming he can play. But he is. He can he, play. I'm just saying, he. I cringe every time the defense lined up last year because you had them light ass players. They wouldn't go outside and sign nobody. They they really didn't bring anybody in. They just start moving little players into the front seven, which yeah. is a recipe for a disaster on first and second down. Uh, you know, as we saw, once if they couldn't get the lead early and force you to throw, right, then, right, uh, then they would hold. So we'll we'll see if they can fix that up. Uh, so it's good that Michael Parsons is back. Maybe he can help. Uh, you know, talk to some of his fellas and get that thing cranked up on defense. But your Dallas Cowboys they got a they got the uh, OTA this week. Now there was some talk around the league about uh, the NFLPA is is about to say uh, we don't want any more off season program. Uh, no OTAs, nothing. When your know, season's over, we we'll see y'all at training camp. How you feel about that? Nah, they, they. I don't, I don't, I don't like that from a standpoint of some guys you need to stay in contact with. Some people can handle that away time, even even though they grown ass men, they're not totally grown ass men. So if you let a guy go, what three, four, five months, you don't see him. What are you gonna look like when he come back? You know, some guys got to check in. It ain't for everybody. Well, I think it's uh, I think it's interesting, uh, and I haven't seen enough on it to know. You know, OTAs whether they whether they just talking about on the field stuff or whether they like no contact at all during the off season. It could just be on the field stuff. Um, you know, you still got to show up and do some meetings and do some lifting and stuff like that. But I don't know because you're right. Some guys that they, they'll want to stay close with just to make sure that uh, you know they don't balloon up and that they do all the yeah. off season work. Yeah, what you look like? What boy you look? Boy, what you supposed? You supposed to weigh two ten? He, you been, you know, you been drinking beer and eating eating subs. But you come in here two forty. You better get that down before you get to camp. What's wrong with you? I mean, this is this is this is a different time and age. Back in the day, we used to use camp to get in shape. Yeah. Now you using camp to win your job. So you know you don't get. Some people got to get prodded. Some people ain't professional yet. You know, some people need a little extra time. But that's good. That's a good, but that's a good uh, nuance right there. Where you talk about is this on the field where they could probably get injured, maybe, or if it's just meetings. If you're just having yeah. meetings and stuff, then they can check you out. You don't have to run around. People can re- get a reasonable idea of what you what you've been up to. Yeah, and I think so. I mean, I know coaches will hate it, but I don't really care because coaches, if they can't have their hands on you, they mad all the time anyway. Uh, they would, the coaches would love for you to have to be in an off-season program every day from the time the season is over to the day before the season begins uh, because coaches think you can never get enough coaching. Um, and sometimes players, I think, need a break, give your body a break, give your mind a break, and uh, you know experience a little bit of life in between football. Uh, so we'll see how that comes out, but that's just a little something uh, to keep an eye on. Uh, let's go to the block, man. Um, I went hiking last weekend and I sent you a text after I spent some time recovering that said I have newfound respect for you because I remember sometimes you say hey we used to have to uh, go five clicks over here and I was like that man talking about damn near five miles with a rucksack or a backpack or something that weighs 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds. Who knows? And I was like, I almost died, it felt like, carrying my body weight around City Ridge Preserve last week. I can't imagine hiking with no uh, rucksack on, no real backpack on, in the hot, hoping that nobody takes me out while I'm on this hike. <laughs> so... You know, newfound, newfound respect. I didn't think it was possible I could respect you anymore, but newfound respect. Uh, let me tell y'all about my hike. Have you ever been? I mean, I know you did clicks in the desert and all this other stuff. Did that? Did that dissuade you from hiking ever, or have you ever been on a hike? Nah, it ain't clicks in the desert. Is that's flat? Okay. I mean, there's no no terrain features in the desert. That's why you gotta have GPS. Very little terrain features. Uh, Korea. Korea is different. There's a hill. I ain't talking about mountains, but there's a long, tall-ass hill about every, I don't know, 
200 meters. Oh. Yeah, it's hilly like that. So, yeah, I spent a lot of time like that. I spent a lot of time in the uh, National Training Center. Uh, I went up Tiford Mountain, which is the highest point up there, to do observation posts. So I did all of that multiple times. So, hell no, as a civilian, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't did no hiking. I'm not interested. Uh, it's beautiful. I mean, I've seen. I've got friends that do that. I have a friend right. lives in Washington right now. The and state man, of Washington. Yes, and uh, he uh, he sends me some outstanding pictures and stuff. But I have no interest in that. Well, let me tell you how this happened, man. One of my boys, his son played with my son at DeSoto. He calls me up, and uh, we're just talking. And uh, he says, hey, I know you like to work out. You want to change it up? We're going on a hike this Saturday. Uh, normally, my son goes with me, but he's going to do something else this weekend. Uh, I got this woman who's going with me. If you want to join us, come on. Now, in all honesty, I really didn't think. I, this is what I thought, man. I thought I work out five, six days a week. I jump a lot of jump rope, so I'm in good cardio shape. I should be able to do a hike. I said, in my mind, I said, it's probably a couple miles. You go in, you follow a trail, you come out. It's okay, cool. I should be able to handle that. Dog, it never, it's my naivete, because I've never been on a real hike. I never really even considered the fact I'd be hyping up what felt like the side of a mountain. I just thought, you know, you go out there, you look at some nature, it's all good. So I showed up at uh, Cedar Ridge Preserve in Duncanville. And I parked, and I walked in the park, man, and I saw my boy, and he said, hey, I got a walking stick for you. And the first thing that crossed my mind was, mm. the hell I need a walking stick for? Hmm, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. really, I need a stick? Yeah, I guess maybe we will go up a little hill or something, and maybe that'll help me keep my balance. And so, man, we walk, we start the hike, and he goes. Normally, we run downhill and walk uphill, but for you, it's your first hike. We're gonna take it slow. Said, okay, cool. But again, I got workout arrogance. I'm feeling like I work out. I'm in pretty good shape. Ah, how hard could it be? Silly me. I was good, man, for the first mile. I'm telling stories. I'm laughing. I'm talking. And then we hit that first incline. And I was like, oh, okay. This is a little, this is a little something here. And uh, I was good for about a mile and a half, mile three quarters. And then he said, hey, I just want you to let you get your heads up. We're coming up on the first real hill. And again, okay, how hard could it be? And when we got to the top of the first real hill, I go, hey, Doc, how long is this hike? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, hey, man, we're about a, a quarter of the way through. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I got one bottle of water and I got a hat on. And let me take a very quick exit ramp. About three years ago, I can't even remember the name of this place, man. It's called Gorilla Park. It's in uh, Plano. Something like that. And it's got a bunch of, you know, walking ladders and zip lines and stuff like that. And I'm afraid of heights. Heights bother me. But my granddaughter, very athletic, very confident, no fear. She wanted to go. And at that time, I was in really, really good physical shape. And I was like, you know what? I think because physically I know I can handle all this stuff. I'm going to go out there with you. Let's go. I'm going to tackle my fear of heights. You can go do this thing. And so we got through this, uh, and it was, but we went at a bad time. We went at about 1030 in September. And, dude, it got steamy out there. And about halfway through the obstacle park, because you're doing these walking ladders and stuff that's 25, 30 feet off the ground, I started getting dizzy because I'm dehydrated. Man, they had to come get me. Uh, and pump fluids in me and I gained nine pounds that day from pumping fluids in my body so let's go back to this hiking thing I went on this weekend 
So as I'm getting more and more heated and more and more tired, I'm starting to look at my vitals because I ain't trying to pass out again or near pass out because I'm dehydrated. And, uh, dude, let me just tell y'all, the last mile and a quarter, mile and a half of that hike, I'm trying to think, man, that may have been the most miserable existence of my life. Now, that means my life ain't really been that bad. Uh, now, here's the part where you're going to laugh, man. You know, he trying to tell me, come on, Jacques, come on, man. You slowing us down. And I was like, duh, you a former professional athlete. I don't give a damn what you got to say about nothing. Because you used to suffering, man. Anybody who's made it to the NFL, and he played five years in the league. Lee Shea Master, former Carter Cowboy star. Played at Baylor where he was a star. Played with Jacksonville and played with the Oilers. Or the Titans, I can't remember uh, if they moved yet. But I tell anybody, man, you can't be no punk and get to the NFL. It's too hard. It's too, you know, the game is too hard for you to reach that level. But if you're a professional athlete, even if you're a D1 athlete, a lot of times you have suffered so much that your mental toughness is a place where normal people's, and I consider myself a normal person, where a normal person's mental toughness is not. Now, I'm suffering through it, but I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to hear nothing from you, dog. So uh, it was uh, it was miserable, man. And we got to this last hill, bro. And I was just like, oh, my God. Uh, and uh, we got to the top of it. And it was some beautiful scenery. He's like, Jacques, go check it out. I was like, dog, I am not wasting any steps to go over there and take a picture or nothing. I need all my steps and all my energy. And uh, when we finally took it, it took us about a mile. It took us about an hour and a half to walk the four miles, maybe a little bit longer. And, uh, dude, when I got out the park, I could barely stand. I was exhausted. Some dude ran over to me and handed me a couple of some kind of bar. He's like, hey, take this. Get a little something in your system. You look like you need it. And I was like, bruh, I need all of this and whatever else you got. And then, uh, so was uh, that dude an attendant, or he was just the guy that was there? No, I think he was a uh, he was some kind of park attendant. Yeah, because sometimes you get in those communities like that, and everybody take care of each other. That's why I. Asked. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You right. Uh, now, I was, okay, I just saw the workout stats uh, from my boy. It was four point zero eight miles. Took us a uh, hour and forty one minutes. Uh, you know, 774 feet elevation. Uh, he burned 1,100 calories. We're about the same size. He's a little bit bigger than me. Uh, but uh, I think I had burned 1,200 um, when I finished. The average speed was 2.4 miles an hour, whatever. So did uh, y'all run? Did y'all do any dude, running? Dude, there was no way in the world I could have run that That's thing. what I'm saying. That's a different level of hiking right there. Ain't nobody trying to run. No, but now he said his son, and I can believe this, he said, oh, my son runs it. Yeah, uh, that's his son. That's fine. Yeah, but he I, said, But he says he runs right downhill and yeah. walks uphill. And I was like, dude, I can't really even imagine that. <laughs> yeah, that's a different level. And right uh, I told him, I said, part of it is you've walked this trail quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So you're very familiar with it. I'm like, you know, this is a real trail, which means you got roots all out the ground and stuff. And, you know, I'm trying not to fall and... Uh, I ain't trying to twist an ankle or do any of that by going too fast because it's all unfamiliar terrain. And then I was doing it. And when I say I didn't prepare, man, like I didn't hydrate the night before. I didn't get up in the morning and hydrate. I didn't eat anything. I just came out there and did the thing. Yeah. And uh, that was one of the worst decisions I made. I was like, you know, I should at least hydrate it in the morning. You know, maybe had a protein shake a couple hours earlier to give me some, a little extra energy, a little extra strength. Uh, but I had nothing, man. And my car was on empty. And I looked like I had gotten my ass kicked uh, when it was all over. Well, now uh, you but, know. Now you know to respect the game. Dude, what I've been doing this week. He like, you know, I told you it reminded me of you. You know, first time me and Joe met, uh, we played Madden. And I think he beat me 56-3 to three or something like that. And he always likes to say, when you left, man, I was like, I, I don't know if I'll ever see that dude again. Yep. 
And I was like back the next week, like, oh, no, dog, I ain't going out like that. Uh, I don't care if I had to stay here six years. I'm going to win one game, and then you may not ever see me. Uh, but uh, so he's like, hey, man, will I ever see you out here again? I was like, yeah, dog, but I'm going to be prepared. Yeah. So, you know, I've been on Amazon all week. Yeah. Ordered me some boots. Mm-hmm. I mean, some, some, some hiking tennis shoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, a camelback. I ain't going to be thirsty. No, never more out in the jungle. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, got some electrolyte gummies. Yeah. Hey, wait, 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 wait. You ain't you on the trail. You're not in the jungle. You're not in the jungle, I, dog. No, I wonder if he's gonna let that go. Yeah, you, you got lots of stuff. You got you got what they call banana spiders. You got some doggone wait a minute vines. You got all kinds of stuff in the jungle what's that a, ain't on a hiking a, what's trail. What's a banana spider? They got a big old butt on them, and when you hit them with your butt of your rifle, they go like that. That's how oh, big that they are. Big? They big as hell. Matter of fact, let me Google that. And, uh, I don't know. If, uh, I don't know if it's that's the name of them. That's what we called them because the, the uh, ass on them was big, like a banana. You just it was probably about silver dollar size. Dang. Yeah, they was big, and uh, you you splatter them things, and then you you had what you call wait a minute vines that vines that would just kind of grab you by the leg, and you'd have to pull your knife out, reach down, and cut them. I kept a little bitty knife just for that. Mm. And uh, yeah, different stuff like that. But now nah, the the thing about it is, is that you finished it. You finished. That's what my you, boy you said. finished your walk. Yeah, you finished it. As hey, you could have quit. Well, here's the problem: if you quit, you out in the middle of the. You still got to go back. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. Once you start, yeah. dog, you locked in. Yeah. Although we passed, dog. I thought about you for a minute because we passed the jeep out there, Humvee, mm-hmm. and I was like. Oh, maybe you can go here and take some pictures or something. No, fool. As soon as we passed it, I saw two people went on there. I mean, walk over there and jump on it. Because why? Somebody on the trail needed some help right then. Yeah. And they had to go get them. Yeah. Uh, but, dude, I was shocked. Like, I'm, again, I'm in pretty decent shape. And I was dying. I saw, I saw families with kids who were three or four walking that trail. I'm like... I don't know how no three or four year old finished this trail. And then I saw some women with uh, carrying babies with them. And I was like, I don't know how y'all doing all of this. I saw lots of little kids, you know, between six and eight. I was just like, this is amazing. Man, you get them little kids some sugar. Hey, you, man. You, is, is that you, what it is? Hey, hey, look. You take you take them little kids to that trail, they ask to be asleep on the way home. You probably got to pull them out, you know, pick them up and take them in the house. That's fine for some people. You want to wear their ass out, put them on the trail. Dog, and we was leaving at like 11 o'clock. I saw some people just showing up. I'm like, y'all out your mind. Yeah. <laughs> y'all are out of your minds trying to do that. Uh, so, but anyway, that was my that was my adventures on the hiking trail this week. Uh, I'm trying to get my my equipment on Amazon bef- tomorrow, which would be Friday today. Uh, but when y'all are listening to it, and hopefully uh, I can go uh, on Saturday because uh, I want to test it out just to see if I, you know, if I prepare, can I, you know, will I function much better than being the, the unprepared person I was last week? Yeah, I think so. That's and, that's just uh, respecting the game. Get a little yeah, more rest, that. get a little more drink, get you some food. It'd probably be a, a, a hell of a difference. You might you might be fast. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was some beautiful scenery because it's uh, it's right. You can see Joe Pool Lake and, and all this other stuff. But, man, I was so tired and I was half dead. I was not interested in anything. Yeah. You say, and, you say uh, the NFL, is that that's, 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 that's really suffering hard. I don't, I don't know. No, I talk about. Well, I just mean the mental toughness that's required to be a professional yeah. athlete. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a. I mean, like, and I say Division One athlete, and I'm I'm not speaking about non Division Ones. I just know about Division One. Like, you know, you go through that off season program at a place like Alabama. Oh, they. You know, their goal is to break you. <laughs> and so I can only imagine, or you know, if you've been in the service and you've had to go through boot camp and all that stuff. Um, you know, that's a level of mental toughness that if you haven't been through it, you know, it's yeah. easy for you to wilt. Uh, boot, camp is, boot camp is for puppies, though. But uh, they do have three hills in uh, Kentucky called Agony, Misery, and I can't remember the other one. Damn. 
And uh, yeah, you learn how to you learn how to walk a long ass way on them hills. I'd have to ask somebody else. Agony, misery, and something else. I seen you a picture of that. You look no. down that you look down that road, you'd be like, man, who the hell gonna walk down now? No, uh, you know, and going up, going downhill ain't really much better than going up here. Uh, it's because it requires a certain level of balance and all this yeah. stuff, and I didn't have the right shoes. Yeah. And uh, I really didn't even think about because you know I had you don't know, but I had strained my hamstring a little bit. And during everyday life, the little strain doesn't matter. You start trying to walk up to the inclines, dog, and yeah. you're like, "Oh, I yeah. forgot my hamstring was jacked up." I mean, it was just, uh, dude, that was, I ain't been that miserable in a long time. <laughs> to me, coming down, like, when I went up Tifer Mountain, that was my first mountain. It's like the highest point in the Mojave Desert in the National Training Center. And I went up there, and uh, it was easier going up. But when I went down, it was like sharp rocks and stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was like the the rocks was pushing my... Uh, knees up into my like my thigh you know what I'm saying right. it just felt like that when you go down when you go down that steep angle like that but yeah that's, yeah, I'm impressed this is, I'm glad you finished shit because everybody ain't gonna finish matter of fact I'm gonna get out the car and look <laughs> and then I'm gonna say alright man alright at least say I holler at you nah I ain't, nah, I ain't for me though no no sir. nah I'm uh I'm uh you know I like uh I like challenges, some challenges. This yeah. is the kind of challenge I like uh, because you can see the noticeable improvement, uh, you know, just because your time will be better or you'll be at the top of the hill and your lungs won't be exploding. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I, that, that's how I judge it. And then I'm also the kind of guy that once I, once I had done it a few times, I'm the kind of guy who might just show up there one day and just go by myself on a Sunday morning. I mean, it's never an empty, empty trail, so there'll be plenty of people out there. Do your phone you know? work out there? Yeah. Okay. That's important. I was important. taking pictures and video. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, the other thing is, and I didn't ask uh, Alicia because I was too exhausted, but um, there might be, and I saw some left and right options. You know, there might be some loops. There's like a one-mile loop or a two-mile loop or a three-mile yeah, loop have or a four-mile like loop. Yeah. He just took the four-mile loop, but there might be some shorter loops out there. Um, you know that that would be available uh, if I was just learning or going out, you know, by myself or something. But I saw plenty of people running it. I saw people wearing weighted vests out there. So you know, it's a uh, there's a lot going on out there at Cedar Ridge Preserve uh, with the. Uh, Make sure you know how far they running before you start running. They might they might take the shorter course or they you know what I'm saying? They might do what you did. Oh, don't no. don't get don't get it twisted and get out there with a weighted vest and you're doing the wrong course. Man, you know, part of what uh and <laughs> part of uh you know, we out there we working, we we walking with this and that. And I told Alicia a couple times like peer pressure had no effect on me out here, dog. <laughs> I'm going as fast as I could go, but I'm not going so fast that I'm going to lose my balance and fall and bust my ass out here spraying my ankle, man. You just got to be mad at me. This is fast as I'm going. Or, you know, yeah. um, this or that. You know, I do that with my guys when we work it out in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my boy, he's, when it comes to bench press, I'm the weakest of the three. And so my boy likes to go uh, 135, 185, 225. I like to go 135, 185, 205. Come on, man, just jump. Nah, dog, it don't work like that for me. Put my 185 on here and get out of my 205 on here and get out of my face. Uh, because, um, you know, the process I go, then I can get to 225, the stair step. So I have to stair step stuff. That's the way my body works. That's the way my mind works. And so uh, when I'm allowed to do that, I can have much more success. Uh, so... I can't give in to peer pressure. I got to run my race and do my thing uh, to add the most of my to add the best chance of success. And so out there, especially having the, you know having had the paramedics come get me on that other course, dog, I was I was being very careful that I was you know I was not going to hurt myself or end up in a situation where I was bad off out there. Yeah, you gotta know when to say whoa. Yeah, no, and I told him that a couple times, like yeah. yo, dog. 
I got to get a little drink right here. Yeah. Uh, I got to stop for a minute, man. Uh, you know, it just is what it is. Yep. If y'all need to go, y'all need to go. <laughs> but I got to stop for a minute. Uh, and he was like, yeah, I, get, I got you. He said, but don't sit down. Whatever you do, don't sit down. Yeah. Your body will lock up on you. For sure. And uh, and uh, I was like, oh, it will? He's like, oh, hell yeah. I said, oh. <laughs> yeah. Again, I ain't been out on no hike, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean? You you sit down and everything just gets stiff. Yeah, that's where the cramps and all of that other stuff start. And you get stiff, and you ain't gonna want to keep going. Ah, which is interesting because I saw plenty of people sitting on benches. Maybe they, maybe they, they, they probably used to it though. Yeah, so I don't know. But uh, I was trying to follow problem. instructions on that tip. I don't. I wouldn't go by other people because you they might not be doing your pace. They might be used. You know what I'm saying? It's different. Once you get used to it, baby, you can sit down because you know your body well. You yeah. know, that's the whole thing. Everybody different. Nah, this is uh, this is very true. Which uh, which led me to my second discussion of the day. Uh, it's one of my favorite discussions because. Uh, you know, I'm at uh, one of my. I got a couple gym memberships. One of them is at the Bougie Gym, and so my workout partners are deciding whether to go to the Bougie Gym or not. And one of them is all in, like, yeah, 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 I'm down. I love this place. And the other guy was like, I don't know. And what it comes down to, and it's never right or wrong. It's just what it is. He doesn't value some of the things at the gym that would make him pay more money. And I love these conversations because no matter how much you try to say, hey, this is great over here and this is great over there, he's like, I just like to work out with y'all. If not for y'all, I would work out at my crib. (laughs) Whereas another guy's like, and so it, it comes down to what you value. And I love having conversations with people about what they value because it's so different. In terms of people, like, uh, I was who you're talking about, and some of it was just the fact that if depending on who you are, before you go to the club, you'll have a couple of drinks because you don't want to buy a drink at the club because a drink at the club costs what? Shit, $20. 20, 20, I would say $25. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you like, yeah. let me drink my drink at the crib. And you know, on what because, kind of club you at? Yeah, but. You spend twenty five dollars to do something else because you value that experience, and so it's, I just love these conversations. Like I was at the bougie gym, dog, and I had left my water at home, and so the workout was over, and I stopped to get a bottle of water. Dog, you know how much the water was at the bougie gym? Three dollars. This is twenty. This is a twenty three ounce bottle of water. Three dollars. Twenty three ounce bottle of water was four ninety seven oh, yeah. at the gym. And she rang it up, and I looked at her. I said, <laughs> no, thank I said, girl, I can't pay that for no bottle of water. Where is the water fountain? <laughs> it was around there, man. Golly. And so she looked at me like I was crazy, and I was like, oh, you're going to have to unring that, and I ain't paying for that. Yeah, I said, why did Costco cost a quarter? <laughs> I said, so I can't do it. What and so I left there. Me? What did you tell me about Dion years ago? When they was oh, trying to, D- when they was trying to put the extra stuff on his car and stuff. Well, no, nah, Dion's thing was uh, one of the first conversations we had was uh, in a corner by his locker. He was on the phone haggling with somebody about how much it cost to put Christmas lights on his house. Yeah. And the number I think I remember hearing, I could be right or wrong, was like fourteen hundred. And it, now you know this is thirty years ago. And I remember him saying, it's not worth that. It's worth about this. And his number may have been, you know, 900 or 800 or 1,000 or something. And he went back and forth for a minute before he just said, okay, you know, you know, I'll call you back if I decide to go. And the whole thing was, you know, they just trying to add price on because I'm Deion. Yep. I'm Deion Sanders. Uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, the, the bigger question is it's always about value, man. And, you know, some, some people put value on experiences, and so they'll pay $500 a ticket to go to the NBA Finals. And some people be like, I would never do that. How could you do that? But you'll pay $10,000 to go on a vacation. And somebody else would be like, I could never do that. 
or you pay three hundred dollars for a bottle of wine. It's just it's just always cool to hear what people value. Like four dollars. I got four dollars. I got five dollars. I just ain't got five dollars to spend on a bottle of water that I can get for free at the crib. That's what I was that's what I was saying about Dion. The, the Dion story you told me was that he went to, to get his car fixed. When he went to get his car fixed, he came back to get his car and they done put like five thousand dollars worth of parts on there. Hey, you like oh, yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Dion was like, Hell no, take that off of that. Well you got yep. the money, but I'm trying to keep my money. Yeah. Take that shit off. A lot of them players will get customized. They cars will get customized. And they go, oh, okay, I'll just give you 5000 Thank you. Now, Dion yeah. was like, hell no, take that off. Get my uh, car back like it was. I was know? always impressed with that. Uh, the thing about it is, that's why I say I never get, like, whether my boys choose to go join the Boozy Gym or not, it, it, it'll never bother me because right. Right. people just got different values. Like, I was talking to Content Dave. And I was like, I want a, I want a certain kind of car, but I just, I just don't want no car note more than about five hundred dollars. That's as much as I want to spend on a car note. And so, if you ain't got a down payment or you don't have a trade or something like that, it's hard to get something for that amount of money. But I'm like, just for me, I can't do it. And other people are like, what are you talking about, man? Eight hundred dollar car note ain't no big deal. I mean, look what I'm driving. It's this, it's that, and it's all about value. What you value? What's the highest car note you have? Uh, the highest car note I ever had, I believe, was, and I'm not flexing here. I'm just, I was asked a question. I bought, uh, I bought my my wife a Benzo for Christmas, and I think the note was five thirty six. Now that mean? was probably twenty years ago. What you mean so. you're not flexing? When you say I'm not flexing, you flexing. Uh, but okay, a ben, well, but a Benz for five thirty six is some good finance. Yeah, I worked that thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So what you flex? Truth ain't flexing. But I had a, uh, you know, that's what I said. I can, you know, I can work it. It was good financing. I found a good deal. I looked for one and then waited for one. Uh, you know. That's the highest car note you had? Yeah. My dually was six something. But that don't sound necessarily like it's a lot. But I'm always looking nah, for deals. It's not, no, it's, no, you know I you 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 know I work that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know. Yeah, so yeah, you know, you know how I do. So yeah, I was good. But you know, dog, like I've had uh, my two seater hard Cadillac convertible. Mm-hmm. That was four hundred dollars. Was the note? Yeah. And people, if I just driving around town, people, you wouldn't assume it was much more than that. Um, you know, the Porsche I got right now, the note was like $300. Yeah. Because I financed it and got, I, I didn't, I paid a certain amount down and got it for a certain price. And yeah. so, yeah. you know, it's, but that's what all it goes into is I just don't never want no big car note. Well, so, when you drive a car, that's what I talk to my kids. I know we're getting a little off here. When you drive a car, how you feel about the car is what you paid for it, you know, the deal you made. Yeah. That all goes into. <laughs> what you, if you writing a three hundred dollar note for a car, you gonna love that shit anyway. If you, you understand what I'm saying, it's, it all goes into what you like. If you made a good deal for, I mean, I've had enough deals where I was like, damn, I'm paying too much. It's a nice car, but right, the, right, right. the best times I felt was like I'm getting my value out of this, which what you talk, which bring you back what you talking about. Yeah, I'm getting my value. I ain't paying but this much right here, so it's all good. Because okay, I did not mind out. driving the Dooley at 600 when it should have been like 8 or 9. So, I'm uh, good. Uh, uh, my boy asked me how much was the membership to the Bougie Gym. And I said, well, it depends on how you look at it. He said, what does that mean? I said, well, take me for instance. The membership to the Bougie Gym is 225 a month. Which is a lot of money to me. I said, but if you use a certain credit card, they give you a $25 credit every month. So that's, to me, that's $200 a month. If you consider the fact that I got rid of one gym membership to come to this membership, that was $35 a month, I say, I look at it as $165 a month. You know, and then uh, there was something else I said, you know, so I look at it as $165 a month. I said, now if I get rid of this other gym sh- membership, because we all here, I look at it as one fifteen a month. 
You know, I said, but hey, do they got free candy in there? They got towels in there? Do they yeah, got they soap? Got... Do they got soap in there? Yeah. Take you some of them candy, them soap, and them towels. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good twenty five dollars right there. No. So you know, but it's a value thing. It's all about what you want, and uh, all about what you're willing to pay for. And there is no right or wrong. It ain't no different than some people like Sizzler, some people like Outback, some people like Nick and Sam's. They all serving you steak. It's just you know the yeah, atmosphere yeah. and the ambiance around. Uh, one of the finest steak houses in Dallas. Okay. Now I know. Yeah, uh, I mean there's a few steak houses in Dallas, but it's it's at the elite level. Roger that. Uh, now, and you know sometimes, and it's a good conversation because sometimes you don't like uh, you don't know what elite level is until you go there. Uh, and you, because you'd be like a steak is a steak, or this is that, but now nah, it's a difference now. Uh, now it's up to each individual to figure out how big a difference it is. But I had never been to a high brow steakhouse until Norm Hitzkis got me a discount at, uh, or got me a free dinner or something at Bob's Steak and Chop House, and I went there. I was like, oh, okay. So there is a little bit of a difference. Don't they got carpet on the floor over there or something? I don't. I can't remember. I ain't been there in a minute. They got hardwood know. floor. I like Pappas Brothers Steakhouse. That's Pappas Brothers Steakhouse. Yeah, Pappas. Man. Who the hell is Pappas? Pappas. Okay, Pappas Brothers, man. Yeah, Pappas Cito's, Papa Do's. Yeah, um, I like their steakhouse uh, right now. It's, it's times of my upper crust steakhouse. That's probably my favorite one right now. Yeah, Papa Do's pretty fancy. Papa Do's pretty fancy, man. I know the problem is I know the waiters. The waiters stand there in the corner and watch your table. Yes, sir. I look over, uh, dude, looking at me. I look over him. He's still looking. I'm like, Damn. <laughs> what you stand there for, me? Henry? For a dog? You got something to say? You want to jump, Finn and Frog? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my problem is, I like to cook at the crib so much that I have discovered that if you go get a good cut of meat, I mean, hey, man, you can make it happen for yourself, and it don't cost steak, steak, steak. Uh, Prices, but when you go there, what are you going for? You going for the experience, the ambiance, and the happy time later? <laughs> well, that's our extended trip around the block this Game week. Line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we hope y'all have been, have enjoyed it. I, I'm trying not to squeak so much, uh, but uh, please uh, follow the show. Make sure you check out the uh, the YouTube. Uh, station, The Real Jacques Talk. We got the interview up that we did with uh, Darren Woodson. We got another one coming soon in maybe a week or so uh, that we've been working on. Uh, but uh, the Woody interview is good. There's some stuff you'll find about him that, that I promise you you've never heard before. It's at The Real Jacques Talk on YouTube. You can follow the show on uh, The Real Jacques Talk on IG. You can hit me up on Twitter and X at uh, JJT Journalist. Remember, if you think you follow me, you don't. Because my account's been hijacked and held for ransom. And I ain't paying shit. And then, um, <laughs> I meant that too. <laughs> you can also follow me on Clapper. Go download and check it out. It's got a Tic Tac format. You'll like Tic Tac format. You'll like it. I really get down over there with some uh, HSOs. It's uh, Clapper. I am Jean-Jacques Taylor is the handle uh, for Big Joe and the Big Rig. Uh, until we chat again, you guys be blessed. 